Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler, and I am the host and the founder of this podcast and the Order of Man movement. Uh, I want to welcome you here. Glad you're tuning in. Uh, I'm just coming off of a, a trip that uh, I have had planned for a while, and, and it's the first trip I've probably had in, in months due to this COVID-19 thing, but I was fortunate enough to go connect with Andy Frasilla uh, at his new facility. And man, I got to tell you, that new facility is absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't think he's disclosed a lot of information about what's in there, but I know he will, so stay tuned for that. And also stay tuned for our podcast. We spent nearly four hours uh, podcasting, two for his podcast, two for mine. Uh, so that'll be coming here, I believe, next week. That podcast will be available. And no joke, it's legitimately one of the best and my most favorite conversations that I've had to date uh, since starting, what, five and a half years ago. So... Uh, make sure you're tuned in. Make sure you're subscribed. I don't want you to miss that interview uh, or any other conversations or podcasts that we're having. Uh, this one is very, very important uh, in the midst and light of everything that's going on uh, with just the world in general and our inability, it seems like at times, to be able to have civil discourse and to be able to have the conversations that frankly need to be had. Uh, and, I, and I think if we can come to the table and start having some of these real conversations with some rules and guidelines that I'm going to outline today, uh, not only are we going to start presenting and seeing some solutions, but we're going to come to some mutual understanding. Uh, if we learn to adopt these principles into our uh, the way that we communicate, our standard operating procedures for the way that we communicate, we'll get more done. We'll be more influential. We'll be more impactful. We'll make more money. Uh, everything that you want comes down, and I've been saying it for years, comes down to your ability to communicate effectively. And what I see in society is so many men, and, I, and I'm hesitant even using that term because when it comes to the way they communicate with people, they're not behaving like men. They're behaving like my four-year-old little child. So these are males of adult age, but they're acting like adolescents. They're screaming and they're whining and they're yelling and they're talking over each other and, and uh, throwing temper tantrums. And ultimately, it's producing the exact opposite of what we're trying to create, which is the ability to thrive, right? We all want to make money. We all want to have experiences. We all, all want to have romantic relationships. We want to have deep connections. We want to feel some sense of, of meaning and fulfillment, purpose in our lives, all of us want that, and yet we're so worried about making sure that our voice is heard at the expense of having civil discourse. And it's a shame because this, to me, is the root of a lot of the issues that we're dealing with. Uh, and, I, and, and this podcast, frankly, is part of that solution. And the reason I wanted to talk with you about, about this today is because Andy and I actually talked about this uh, when, when we recorded a couple of days ago. Uh, and we, we talked about the need for being able to have conversations like men. So what I want to do today is explain to you and share with you five, I don't know what you want to call them, bullet points, principles. I like standard operating procedures because these are things that you just need to incorporate into your communication. And when you do, you're going to be better off. The people you're wanting to serve are going to be better off. Even the people that you don't even have any responsibility or obligation for, those people are going to be better off. So let's break this down. Uh, like I said, I've got five of them. I wanted to talk with you about each one um, briefly, and maybe you have some additional thoughts and ideas. Make sure you're connected with me on the socials. Primarily, uh, Instagram is probably best. That's where I spend most of my time when it comes to social media. Uh, but you can connect on, on YouTube, Order of Man, Instagram is at Ryan Mickler. Twitter is at Ryan Mickler. Facebook is at Ryan Mickler. You can find me. You can track me down. So make sure you do it, and we'll continue to have these conversations outside the podcast. So point number one, and I put this one first for a reason, but you have to be able to pick your fights. When it comes to conversing and having conversations with individuals, you have to pick your fights. And I know social media is not conducive to being able to have these types of conversations. And, and most people, it seems to me, and, and I've fallen prey to this as well, believe that because we have the opportunity and or the right to say something, that we need to actually say something, that we have to exercise it. And you know what? You don't. Like there's times where it's not worth getting into a fight. Uh, there's times where the conversation isn't relevant or important to you. Uh, there's times where you know it's not going to go well anyway, so why even get into the midst? And yet, because we have the opportunity and we can punch away on that keyboard, we take advantage of it, even though maybe we shouldn't. 
So that is the first principle of conversing like men is knowing what's worth the conversation and what isn't. And not everything is worth your time, your attention, your energy, your resources. And you have to ask yourself, could the amount of time I'm investing in this conversation or, or divesting, I guess, is probably more accurate with most of the conversations I've seen lately. But you've got to ask yourself, is that worth my time or could I be utilizing this time in another way? Can I be uh, having a conversation with my wife? Can I be talking with my employees? Can I be doing sales training? Can I be learning new information? Can I be engaged in a hobby or taking a nap or working out any number of things that are significantly going to better serve you than getting into a debate or a fight that just isn't worth having? And men know how to use their resources effectively. Now, most of us, when I say that, think money, but it's not just money. It's your time. We've all heard the adage, time is money. And even though it's overplayed and We've lost a lot of what that meaning is. It's still, there's, there's truth to it. That's the reason we all know it because there's truth to it. And when you decide to give your, your attention to something that isn't worthy of your attention, then you're missing out on opportunities that could help you become a better man or help you serve somebody else more effectively. So point number one, pick your fights and, and just realize that not everything is worth you even saying things. And sometimes we just like to come back, especially on social media again, with these little snarky, snippy comments. Like even that, like why get sucked into that? And I know I'm not immune to that. You guys have seen me interact on social media. I do, believe it or not, <laughs> try to stay above the fray, but um, I do get sucked into it every once in a while. And when I do, I instantaneously regret it. And I know exactly what I did wrong. And so it's hard. It's hard to resist the temptation to like want to interject into trivial nonsense. But if you want to converse like a man and you want to get the most done and you want to be the most effective with your time and the most effective when you do decide to uh, engage in a conversation, you've got to know when to engage and, and when to withdraw. And that doesn't make you weak. It just means that you value your time and you know what, what you want to do spending it. Okay, so that's point number one. Uh, point number two is if you do decide that you're going to engage in a conversation or a debate or a discussion or, you know, whatever, what, how, however that looks, uh, that you set the terms of the conversation. And, and I'm not saying that every time you converse with somebody that you need to outline and document the way that you're going to behave and the way that you're going to act. Obviously, that's not going to work. But at least in your mind, there's got to be some rules. There's got to be some boundaries in place. And, and for me, what's worked is having these boundaries in place and then seeing if somebody crosses those boundaries, you know, depending on the conversation, I might actually give that individual a warning like, hey, you know, I don't appreciate the way that you're saying this or talking this way um, and, and give the conversation a chance to get back on track. Uh, and depending on the conversation, I might just say, you know what, not worth having. You cross that line. I just know where this is going. And again, it comes back to point number one is knowing what fights to pick and which ones not to. And if somebody continues to break your rules, it could be these standard operating procedures I'm outlining today or just the way the conversation is going to go or the timing or the outcome, whatever your rules are, then you have every right. And I would say a responsibility to disengage from that conversation because these conversations can go downhill and you've all been experiencing that uh, very, very quickly. And, and your goal is to not get sucked into things that are not productive, not just in dialogue, but in life in general. Like how easy is it for us to get on our phone and dink around and get sucked into social media? How easy is it for us to lose an hour or, or 30 minutes, you know, sitting on the toilet instead of just taking care of our business and getting right back to work, we're sitting on our toilet dinking around on our phones, right? Like, or, 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 or watching Netflix or whatever it is. Like we all have these outlets and I think they're okay as long as you don't let them rule you and you don't become distracted by these things. And that's what a lot of dialogue and conversations turn into. They turn into distractions. And what I think is so many men are engaged at that point that they think that if they withdraw, even if it's according to their own rules that they've established, that the, it makes them weak or they lost the conversation. And so if you're continuing to go down a rabbit hole, you don't want to go down. It might be because of your ego. We had a saying, uh, in, in the financial planning world, which was don't chase, uh, bad money with good or don't chase good money with bad. Right? So the point, 
the point of the, the, the phrase is that if you see uh, a, a bad investment, like don't continue to engage in the bad investment. What, here's a great example. People will say when it comes to the stock market, uh, they'll say, you know, I really want to uh, re-diversify my portfolio. I want to fix this and get this portfolio where it needs to be, but I've lost so much money and so uh, I, I want to get back to even before I change it. Well, okay, that's exactly what you're doing, right? You're, you're just pouring good money into a bad investment because of your ego, because of your pride and your arrogance. And we do the same thing with conversations. I got to win. I want to win. I'm going to get them. Oh, I'm gonna, I got a great comeback. I'm going to get them with this one. It's like, how much better could that time have been spent? So know your rules, set those in your mind. Uh, and if it's some sort of like formal debate, then of course you're going to have some conversations about the groundwork for the conversation you're going to have. But typically you're not going to be sharing that with people. Um, but if they cross the line, you have to decide, am I going to give them a warning and let the conversation get back on track because it's progressing some, somewhere and it's worth having? Or am I out altogether? And you have to make that decision. Uh, point number three is seek to learn and educate, not win. So this goes back into my previous point where we want to win. And if you go into a conversation thinking that the outcome, the result, the thing that I want more than anything is to win, then you're more likely to slip up, to mess up, to waste your time, to react immaturely, to be uh, um, overly emotional because your sole objective is to win. And if that objective is to win, then what I see a lot of men do is the, they'll do anything in order to accomplish that objective, even make fools of themselves or be out of integrity with the way that they want to show up and the way they want to dialogue and converse with people. So um, a better, more powerful motive for getting into a conversation is that either I can learn something from this or I can educate. And so within the context of this podcast, for example, I'm educating right now. I'm educating. I'm teaching you. Uh, hopefully you're getting some good, valuable information out of it. Uh, and that's my objective in this particular dialogue. Uh, if I'm doing a conversation with Andy, for example, or Jocko, or any number of guests that we've had on the podcast, then not only do I look at it as my job to educate and inspire the people who are listening, you, but it's also my job to learn, which is why I try to ask thoughtful questions, thought-provoking questions, uh, dig a little deeper into things that maybe aren't normally talked about because I'm trying to learn. I'm curious. And so I never go into a podcast conversation. In fact, it's, it sounds stupid to go into a podcast conversation with the objective to win the, the podcast, like win the conversation. It doesn't even make sense. And yet so many of us get wrapped up, especially on social media, thinking I'm going to get this guy and... I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to dominate the, you know, it's like, what's the point of that other than to stroke your own ego? And if, if, if all of the sides that were engaged in dialogue and conversation knew these rules and, and applied them, because I, I think most of us know these rules, but we actually applied them, the, the world would be a better place. And if you get involved with somebody who's not willing to apply these rules, at least in part or, or make an honest attempt, then that person's not worth having a conversation with because you're not going to educate them because they're closed minded. You're not going to learn anything because they may not be credible. And so if they don't meet those two factors, then why even have the conversation in the first place? All right. So again, point number three is seek to learn and or educate not to win. All right. Point number four, discuss with intellectual honesty. This is something that I see all the time. People t take things out of context. They pre pretend, this is crazy. They pretend like they can't comprehend things. Like they can't understand the meaning of phrases and words and nuance. Like they act stupid or ignorant in order to like win the argument. I I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, you might say something, uh, just like a, cr a crazy example would be like, if I said, um, you know, I just, I really love dogs. Somebody might come back and say, well, why do you hate cats? Like, are you really that dense that that's what you interpreted my message as? And, and I don't think for the most part that people are that dense. I think they're playing the part. I think they're pretending they are. So like somehow they could get me or I don't know. It's, it's really weird. I've, I've never seen so many people clamor to, to make themselves look ignorant and foolish in order to win an argument. It's, it's very strange. Um, but 
the other thing I see a lot is logical fallacies. And there's dozens of logical fallacies. You guys can look it up. In fact, I think I did a podcast maybe a couple of months ago on some of these logical fallacies. Uh, I'm going to share with you a couple that I had written down that I think are pretty typical and common and, and ones that, frankly, I, I fall into. You know, I fall into these all the time. But if you can be aware of these things and know how you employ them and then know how other people employ them, then you're better equipped to deal with them when they come up in a mature, masculine way as opposed to acting like a boy and getting your feelings hurt and lashing out and being overly emotional and reacting instead of responding the way you should. So the first one I identified is a false dichotomy. So this is a logical fallacy, an intellectual uh, falsehood, I guess is what you'd say, okay? A false dichotomy. This is presenting one of two options without presenting any other very viable options. So for example, one logical fallacy I see all the time in our Facebook group is this question, something to the effect of, would you rather make lots of money or be happy? You, you don't have to choose one or the other. You can make great income and be happy or be fulfilled. So that's a great example of a logical fallacy. So when you see people presenting two options, black and white, and I tend to do this because I'm very black and white, but if you see this black and white scenario, very often what that person is employing, whether doing it uh, consciously or subconsciously, is a false dichotomy. You can either pick A or B, but they completely neglect and overlook C and the other infinite number of options that could be a real viability uh, in the discussion. So false dichotomy. The next one, straw man. All right, and a straw man is misinterpreting uh, somebody's point of discussion in order to make it easier to attack. That's what a straw man is, is you're misrepresenting what the individual is saying so that you could come back and attack not what they're saying, but you can attack the misrepresentation. We see this all the time. Whenever you're having discourse with people, uh, people will come back and, and, and make a comparison uh, or, or show an example. It's kind of like this, and it has nothing to do with what you said. That's a straw man. So be very careful of the straw man. They're, they're, again, they're not being intellectually honest. And, and sometimes I think they're doing it intentionally, and other times I think they're doing it unintentionally. But both are bad. There, both are reasons not to continue in, to engage in a conversation like that because it's just not going to go anywhere. So there's a straw man. The next one, loaded questions. A loaded question is designed to set you up, to tee you up, uh, to, to fail. Well, and I think there's two different types of loaded questions. So one loaded question might be uh, a question that is impossible to answer without making you look bad. So a great example of that would be, when did you stop cheating on your wife? Well... I can't answer that question because the question itself insinuates that I even was cheating on my wife in the first place, which isn't true. So the loaded question is predicated on inaccurate information and therefore I can't give an answer without incriminating myself. That's one version uh, of a loaded question. So be very, very careful when they're teeing you up that way. Another way that I see a loaded question, and you can always tell through one phrase people say, is they'll say, honest question. Honest question, do you really believe dot, dot, dot? In my experience, in my opinion, if it really was an honest question, you wouldn't need to say honest question. The only reason you're saying honest question is because it's actually a dishonest question. You're trying to set somebody in a trap and you think they'll see through it. So you try to preface in order to avoid them detecting your deceit by saying, no, this is honest, honestly, like I truly honest question. I really want to know, but all of us know exactly where that goes. And, and, and I think you can see this is very true when it comes to polls. You, you take polls from the last presidential election, for example, every poll out there, I'm sure there was some fringe polls, but just about every poll out there had Hillary Clinton, Clinton winning the presidency handedly. And yet that didn't happen. So why didn't that happen? Well, I think part of it was because not only the polling data, who, who these pollsters are actually polling, but the individuals who were voting for Trump, who were asked this poll, they weren't like, quote unquote, supposed to vote for Trump. 
And so they didn't want to disclose that because they didn't want that information used against them. So what did they do? They lied because they knew that the, the, the question was a setup. They didn't want to be set up. So they lied, which then skews the data. These are different forms of loaded questions. And if people, again, if people are going to debate in these types of uh, logical fallacies, then these are red flags to you saying that this is not an individual you want to get into a conversation with because they're either intentionally trying to deceive and mislead and win the conversation or they're unintentionally doing it. They're ignorant. And in that case, what again is the point of even having the debate? or the conversation. It's not worth having. Uh, the last logical fallacy I wanted to share, certainly not the last one, but the last one I wanted to share with you uh, is an appeal to authority. So a great example of, an, of appealing to authority, and, and you see this in uh, religious circles. And, and I'm Christian, but this is still a problem because it, it just doesn't create uh, great conversations is people will say, well, you know, it says in the Bible or God says dot, dot, dot. So we know it must be true. The problem with that, although I would probably agree because I believe in God and I read the Bible and, and I believe it to be true. The reason I don't appeal to that authority is because not everybody recognizes God as the authority. So if I'm having a, a civil conversation where we're trying to create a win-win scenario for me and the person I'm having a conversation with, remember, it's about educating and learning. So we're reciprocating. We're, we're, we're both helping each other. If I'm, a, if I'm trying to have this conversation with somebody and I'm appealing to authority that they do not recognize, like, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? It's not. So although I can appreciate your zest and your zeal for your beliefs, your, your spiritual beliefs. If you're having a conversation who doesn't have that same foundational belief, then you cannot base a conversation on that appeal to authority. The only way it would work is if you know ahead of time that you both recognize that authority as an authority figure. And then of course, then obviously that, that would make sense. But if you haven't established that you can appeal to authority and it'd be a logical civil conversation. It's just going to go downhill very quickly. So those are a couple of examples of logical fallacies. But um, in fact, I just pulled up a website because I think it's interesting stuff. Uh, the website is your logical fallacy is.com. So it's your logical fallacy is.com. And it looks like there's 25 or so logical fallacies that they pull up right here and they have definitions of what they are. It's, it's interesting. I like it because I talk for a living. So being able to have real conversations with people in a way that's going to produce effective outcomes is important to me. And it should be important to you too, whether you're a podcaster or you're trying to get a promotion at work, uh, or you're, you're debating with your uncle over, you know, dinner, like what, whatever context of a conversation, you're going to need to know this stuff. So learning how to converse effectively and communicate effectively is very powerful. So that was number four is to discuss with intellectual honesty and ensure the other party is too, because if they're not, for me, I'm out. If they're not going to be honest, intellectually honest, I'm out of there. Uh, the last point that I wanted to make, guys, is basically know your, know your shit. Like, know your information. Know what it is you're talking about. Because if you're speaking out of your ass, you're, you're, you're only hurting yourself. You're undermining any credibility that maybe you had or you won or you gained. Um, and and if, if a conversation goes in a direction that you're just not familiar with, you don't know, then I, I think it's not only appropriate to say, I don't know, but it's if you want to converse like a man then i think it's an obligation it's mandatory look why would you have conversations about things you don't understand now you can have an opinion about things and and certainly you have the right to to mouth off and talk about things that you don't know i mean we see this with COVID all the time politics is the same way you know everybody's a a, a, a expert uh a constitutional lawyer or scholar right? When, when the, the constitution gets brought into question, uh, when it comes to COVID, everybody's a, a medical practitioner all of a sudden. So it's like, stay in your lane. And, and I don't mean that, like, don't have opinions about other things. I, I mean, know what you know and know what you don't know. And it's probably better to keep your mouth shut when you're having a conversation with somebody, especially if they know what they're talking about, because you're going to made to look like a fool very quickly. 
and, and you're not fooling anybody. Like when you mouth off and you pretend like you know, like you're not fooling anybody. You just sound like a moron. You sound like an idiot and you undermine your credibility. So don't do that. Just respectfully, politely, maturely say, you know what? That's, that's an interesting point. I actually don't know a whole lot about that. Uh, but here's one thing I do know. And then you can draw back into what you know and direct the conversation where you want it to go. So I know this is kind of like boring stuff, maybe a little bit, but it's not like it's, it's so important that you know how to have conversations with people. The better I've gotten at communicating with individuals, the more successful I've been. It's enhanced my marriage. It's enhanced the relationship with my children. It's certainly enhanced my ability to have a, a powerful conversation on this podcast, which in turn has enhanced my income and my influence and credibility and reach. Uh, everything, everything that comes from learning how to communi communicate effectively, everything's enhanced. Everything's better. There's no downside to learning how to be a more effective communicator. So learn these things. Again, connect with me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Parler. I don't, I'm not on TikTok or any of that kind of stuff, but those four or five, you can connect with me there and let me know. What did I miss? Maybe you have some rules, some standard operating procedures outside of the five I shared here uh, that have served you well, that have kept you out of conversations you shouldn't be having, uh, that have had meaningful outcomes with the conversations you should be having. And, and I think, again, our whole goal here with Order of Man is to give you and provide you with everything that you need to be a better man in whatever capacity that is, and learning how to communicate and learning how to converse like a man, not like a child, will serve you so, so well. I mean, I've seen young men, I'm talking like 12, 13, 15, 16, even 18 year olds who communicate so soundly, so effectively that I'm motivated, I'm inspired, I'm led by what these young men are saying because they know how to present it in a rational, intelligent, thoughtful way. And that's what I want for me, certainly. That's what I want for you because I want you to win and this will help you do it. So again, recap and then we'll shut things down for the day. Number one, pick your fights. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Know what conversations you want to get into and which ones, frankly, you don't. Deploy your assets effectively. That includes your time and energy. All right, number two is set and know the terms of the discussion. If you don't know what they are, you don't know what the boundaries are, then you're going to let people walk all over you. You're going to get drawn into a, a bloodbath, at least a mud fight, without even realizing that's what happened. Like before you know it, you look around, you've been rolling around in the pig shit all day, and you're like, oh, I didn't even realize this is what happened. Right, because you didn't establish the rules ahead of time. So know what they are, and when people cross those boundaries, and those boundaries are determined by you, by the way. You, and you alone. If you have those boundaries in place, those are your boundaries, those are your rules, and you don't owe an explanation to anybody. If they want to operate and have the conversation under that premise, great. If they don't, that's on them. But your rules are for you, and if an individual breaks those rules, crosses over their boundaries, I try to be gracious as, as best I can and let that person know, hey, I'm not going to let you talk with me like that. If you want to continue to have this conversation, uh, here's how it's going to go. And I give the, I give the conversation an opportunity. And I give that individual an opportunity because you know what? Sometimes I get heated and sometimes I need to be reminded, hey, bro, like we're, we're trying to have a serious discussion and you're getting emotional about it. And people have checked me that way. And it's, it's, it hurts the ego. It hurts the pride. But, but if you're mature about it, you're like, yeah, that's right. Okay, let's reengage in a respectful way. Uh, point number three is seek to learn and or educate, not to win. Point number four is discuss with intellectual honesty. Remember the logical fallacies. The examples I gave was the false dichotomy, uh, straw man, loaded questions, and the appeal to authority. And then the fifth point is to know your information. Like, stay in your lane. Again, it's, it's about what you know. You can have opinions about things, but if you're going to have a real conversation with somebody, you better know what it is you're talking about. And if you don't know what you're talking about, it's better to say, I don't know. I can find that out. Interesting perspective. I need to learn more about that. But what I do know, and then you go back in, into, into your lane where, where you wanted this conversation to go. Okay. Please learn this stuff, guys. I think it's important now more than ever. Social media is great. Uh, we wouldn't be here without social media. It's very powerful. I know it gets a bad rap. I know everybody beats up on it and bashes on it, which is ironic because we use social media to bash social media. But I've formulated so many great connections and built this great business and movement by doing this. Um, so for all it's good, you have to know how to use the tool effectively. And whether you're conversing digitally, 
behind a keyboard uh, or you're conversing face to face, uh, you, you got to know what you're talking about. And if you don't, it's okay, but just say it and then get back on track. Use these tools. And I think they'll help. Okay. That's it guys. That's all I've got for you. Have a great weekend. I hope you guys are uh, spending time with family and friends and, and doing what it is you're doing. Maybe you're working, maybe you're engaged in activity, whatever it is, just be productive. All right. If you're working, work your ass off. If you're engaged in a hobby or an activity or a vacation, make it the best vacation you ever had. Uh, if you're spending time with family and friends, like be present and available and there for them and with them, just be present in whatever it is you happen to be doing this weekend. And then uh, we'll be back next week with a interview with, like I said earlier, the one and only Andy Frisilla. All right, guys, we'll check you then. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.